Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here with Evan Jacobs from Marvel. Evan, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Sure. Well, in lieu of NAB, we are, um, we're doing a lot of interviews on Zoom to talk about trends and all that. Before we start that, why don't you tell people um, your job title, because it's a little different than most, and, and all that it entails. My title is Creative Finishing Supervisor for Marvel Studios. Um, most people um, wouldn't necessarily know what that means, but it kind of means what it sounds. Um, Essentially, I'm responsible for carrying the ball through post-production creatively for all the projects we do. So that's um, all the theatrical projects, all the streaming projects, as well as marketing for all those projects to make sure that we have a consistent high level of quality and um, consistent creative standards are met and that sort of thing. Um, and so basically what that means on a day-to-day -day basis is really sitting uh, in a lot of DIs and, and saying, hey, Thor's cape's the wrong color. It was this color in this other show, you know, this kind of thing. So uh, I sometimes describe it like being a product manager um, for uh, the visual side of Marvel. It's not really quite that, but there's an element of that, uh, making sure that um, there's consistency across all the shows and, and uh, you know, because we have different colorists, different teams, different you know, obviously different creative people. And, and it's not that we're trying to make everything look the same. It's quite the contrary, but at some level you do, you know, we're part of, we're building a cinematic universe. And so you do want um, a viewpoint that kind of threads through the whole thing. So that's really what I do. Now, is this all in your head? Do you have like a, a lookbook or how do you do it? No, it's pretty much, it's, it's funny. It's, I've been here for eight years and I've worked on, um, so I started here on uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, which is the second Captain America movie. It was about halfway through what they call phase two or the big, maybe the third of the way through phase two. I don't know. Uh, it depends on how you want to quantify the phases, I guess. But in any case, but then in the process of doing this job, I also remastered all of the original films. So I've actually worked on all of the films now. And um, so you, you build up sort of institutional knowledge from that. Um, and you can obviously always just pull up material and, and, and refer back. And it's funny because like an individual prop might show up, you know, there's a prop called the Tesseract, which has been in many of the projects and, and it doesn't always look exactly the same. The visual effects teams, of course, are always looking to make sure that it's similar, but every show has its own, you know, specific look um, and creative style. You just don't want the fans to be confused about what it is. So you want it to be similar enough through the lens of that particular show. One of the weird um, things, criticisms over the years that I've heard about Marvel and, and, and color is that all the Marvel movies look the same, which is uh, really not true at all. If you actually take the time to put one, you know, put Guardians of the Galaxy next to Ca Captain America Winter Soldier, they, they couldn't have been more different. The cinematography is completely different. The color, the, 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 the LUT that we used, everything about it is different. But there is a consistent high level of quality that we're delivering, and that is something we do try to do. I apologize for that. Um, but, you know, when it comes to those kind of like through line storytelling moments, you definitely want them to be as consistent as you can so the audience can track what's going on. So what about the challenges of working during a pandemic? How did you guys adapt? Um, was, were the colorists in studio? Were you in studio just being really careful? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I. So I've been here on the lot as I am today, uh, the Disney lot, which is where we're located. Um, I've been here almost the entire pandemic, right? I was, I think we closed down for, I don't know, maybe four weeks I was out of the office and I was working from home. And then ever since then I had to be back. We were initially, we were delivering Black Widow and uh, the theatrical finish of that movie, which ultimately that delivery got pushed, but we, we finished the movie um, we were really, really close to being done with that movie right before we all um, went on lockdown. And so as soon as we could get back on our feet, um, somebody had to be here because almost nobody could come to the studio. Everybody was working over Clearview and um, other remote collaboration tools. And so everybody's seeing things on television sets and, and that's a theatrical movie. We're sort of used to seeing things in theaters. So, um, so I came back to the lot. I was one of the handful of people that was sort of considered essential, and we and we um, and we finished that movie up. Uh, even the colorist, Jill Bogdanovich, graded that movie, and she at Company Three, and she was remote. So she was she wasn't even in the theater with us. She was in her own theater by herself. You know, you get creative in these situations. And then we, of course, had you know that session being broadcast out 
Rec 709 to lots of other people. Uh, um, but it was sort of like me and the filmmaker and uh, you know me, the director and the editors uh, were the only people really in the room and visual effects, I guess, for a bit. Uh, it was crazy. Are things a little bit back to, are they back to normal now? What what have you taken from, from just the learning experience and what do you see staying going forward? So just to give you a little context. So up until um, the pandemic, we were basically at Marvel Studios, we were producing between two and three movies a year, theatrical projects. And that's what we were delivering. And the team was built for that. And that's what we were kind of doing. And, and just before the pandemic, you know, they announced the Disney Plus streaming service and that Marvel was going to produce a bunch of streaming shows, which were going to be, you know, six hours long instead of two. And we were going to do several of those a year. And so our um, output as a studio creatively increased dramatically right as the pandemic struck. Um, now, obviously that had been, a, we knew that was coming. We had been planning for it and stuff, but we didn't know about the pandemic. And so um, we already had to sort of uh, change and modify our work approach um, just to do all this extra work because we really didn't spin up like, you know, a completely separate unit to do streaming. It's the same executives. It's the same creative people. It's the same. It's not Marvel Studios light. It's just Marvel Studios. We're doing things for one platform or another. It's the same stuff. And so when we sat down to do that, we said, well, we're going to have to build. I felt like, you know, we have really strong partners in the finishing area with company three, most recently in technical or in the past, um, theatrically finishing our projects with us. And they're great, but it was like a tr dramatic increase in the amount of content we we're going to produce. And so we said, well, I said, the only way to do it is to build a better mousetrap and actually like try to even suck more air out of the process than we already have. And the only way I could see to do that was to work inside this Marvel security bubble and build our own internal finishing suite that, that with our own colorists and stuff inside. So that's what we did. We had been in the process of building that and then suddenly COVID hit. And then WandaVision was the first show out of the gate and we produced that entire show. We finished that entire show in-house in our new unit with nobody here. <laughs> it was the craziest thing. But that became kind of like a weird new normal where now I think a lot of people, you know, because like I say, the, the same executives are responsible for all this theatrical content. We've got a tremendous amount of stuff that's been announced and other things that haven't. There's a lot of stuff coming, plus all these streaming shows and then the marketing of all those shows and everything else. And so we we were looking at all this and going, how in the possibly are they going to be able to attend all these sessions? How can they come to these meetings? How can they come? Well, being able to jump on a clear view and be able to, you know, not have to walk all, all the way across the lot to one screening room and then walk all the way to across the lot to another screening room and all that kind of stuff. It, it all sucks time out of the day and it goes faster. And for a lot of the stuff that these people are looking at, if I'm in the room and they say like, look, Evan's in there, he's looking at the high res images on a big screen he can flag any issues but they can kind of hit the creative tone hey it's a little too blue it's a little too yellow whatever you know enough that you can kind of judge enough of that stuff it's amazing how well it's worked and then I can kind of carry that fine tuning stuff that I kind of know instinctively what they're going to want to do there's a group of people like myself that kind of have to be in those rooms but not everybody does so we used to have 20 25 people in a room just to finish something and now you sort of go like, man, maybe five of those people, six of those people need to be there. And the rest of them can be listening on the side and they can still be a part of it. And they can and actually more people can be included because now you're not limited by the number of seats. So right. and, and it's a little bit more efficient in a way, right? It's way more efficient. So look, the only thing that sucks is, you know, we're still getting better at the remote collaboration stuff. So there's still a lot of like, are you, are you glitching? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Is this the right, that looks really broken. Is that, you know, you spend time with that stuff. And I'm sure anybody who's watching this has been through that, but it's getting better. And it's, and, and, you know, to, to a credit to Sohonet. I mean, those guys spun, if you want. I mean, we were, beta testing it, right? Like we were just starting when the pandemic hit, we were like, yeah, we had engaged with them. We were like, yeah, this is a cool solution. We should do this. Cause I just thought, well, maybe 
initially it was a solution for me on a personal level, like I'll get a call at midnight to say, hey, there's a trailer, it has one new shot update. Do you wanna to drive to Hollywood and look at that one shot? Or do you wanna hop on this virtual thing and just say like, hey, the colorist looked at it, is it okay? Yes, it's good, right? Normally I would have had to drive there. You know what I mean? That's the way, that's the, that's the way it goes. And I was, it was a solution to that problem initially. And then suddenly it became like, let's do everything with this. Everything, everywhere, every visual effects review, every DI, like let's do everything with this. And it's crazy how much they had to scale. Can you talk about some of the shows that are already done that'll be coming out? Well, so where we are right now, we finished, so WandaVision uh, uh, finished its run. Uh, Falcon, Winter Sol uh, Falcon Winter Soldier finished its run. Uh, Loki, we finished that one. And the most recent delivery for us was What If, which was our first animated show which was a, a completely different kettle of fish for us, which was fun. We've never done, I mean, you know, the other shows were kind of like long features, you know, with interesting complexity. Um, WandaVision in particular had a lot of interesting complexity because of all the different looks and stuff. Um, and the length, the whole rhythm of those finishes is different, you know, because right? about the same number of visual effects shots as any of our features, like 3000 shots in these shows, but they're spread out a bit more over a longer period of a show so the show has, the storytelling has a little more like room to breathe than maybe our features do. Um, the, uh, but anyway, but so, whereas what if is like, you know, every single shot is a shot and, and, and you know, animation is its own interesting challenges, right? Because we were trying to find a look and there was not, it wasn't as simple as like, that looks real or that doesn't look real. It's sort of like, well, what should it look like? What can't, you know, what we can look like whatever we want it to look like, what's right, you know? And we were, it was interesting be, that one because I don't know if you had a chance to see any of it, but like, there's a lot of MCU references in the show. So you have shot, you have, you have scenes that have been lifted out of Iron Man made into animation but now with a different story twist. And so we have um, the inspirational, the inspiration for the color is there because we have the shows and we're familiar with it, but it's different too. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's been a fast, that was a fascinating project to finish. So all of those have been finished inside our new finishing unit um, with, uh, we've got, you know, a, a basically a boutique inside of this gigantic Disney machine. Obviously on the theatrical side, we just finished Shang-Chi and we're in the middle of Eternals right now. Um, and then we've got, you know, this murderer's row of movies one after another coming, coming up next. So, and those are all being handled more or less the way we've done features for a long time. We move company three onto the lot and they run that show much more traditionally. Um, but, you know, we're trying to kind of like push everybody to say like, hey, is there a better way to do this, you know? And, and find new and interesting ways to make this go faster because there's, it's just out of necessity. There's so much content we're producing. We're being asked to produce so much. And um, I mean, look, I'm, we're not Netflix. I mean, Netflix is producing like ridiculous. We're, but, 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 you know, we're still a relatively small company and we have a lot of stuff going through a small group of people and we have to, and we want to keep the quality as high as we can. So that's really what we've been trying to do.